happy Mother's Day. Uh, thank you for watching my videos and I appreciate every one of your comments and your subscribing. This video is a video I did live for Mother's Day, a tribute of my mother. And I am scrapbooking a couple of pictures I received from her boyfriend that he had found um, after she passed away. So he had sent them to me and heritage photos are kind of out of the box for me. So I thought these would be great to do for a live. So I had two pictures of her when she's in nursing school. Um, so she is, I'm going to point her out. She is the one right there on the right and she has a little Christmas hat on. These pictures are actually from January of 1965. So she was about 16 years old. I'm sorry, 17 years old, 17, 18 years old. She was born in uh, 47. So this is the paper pack I'm using, which is um, Echo Park Reflections. And the color worked out perfect. So I'm doing a sketch challenge. So that's the sketch challenge, the sketch I picked. And um, this paper, just it couldn't have been a better choice. My office is the green. I love blues. I love clocks. So this paper pack was like made for it. So I am from England, so it had England in there. So I couldn't have found a better paper pack. So I was going through just trying to find what background paper worked best for me and what paper was in the pack. Um, so I decided upon that um, the background you see right there with the kind of florally green. Uh, I am putting in the shadow box, which you saw quickly. You'll see that again. So I didn't want it to be too busy. And actually, I'll show you the shadow box in a minute. I didn't want it to be too busy. So I uh, did go with this kind of florally green, which is the exact green of my wall. I've also posted a picture uh, at the end. Well, I think I put a picture at the beginning too. <laughs> I say this voiceover is new for me. Um, so as the video was, I think, close to two hours, I figured I needed to speed it up. <laughs> so, um, so this blue medallion is just my favorite color too so it worked out perfectly for the colors i like so this is the shadow box it's a nice deep shadow box hinged shadow box and i'm going to put it right in the in my office right on the wall in my office so it was nice because i could add depth and this is one of the reasons i wanted to speed it too is i was having issues with buffering um it was live on facebook and it was kind of as you can see kind of gets uh, had some issues so I'm using one of our banners right there and um, it kind of worked perfectly for the sketch challenge and the envelope I'm showing is how I store my large templates. Some people ask often how do they store your large templates. I use that large clear plastic envelope. It's perfect to keep them safe. I'm looking at the different uh, kind of in the layout they use the doily. So I actually end up using lacy trims as the uh, circle kind of doily effect at the top. Uh, so I'm using the banners number two and lacy trims uh, at the top for my little doily. Um, and now I'm looking to add little embellishments. I wanted to, to do a cluster up in that top right hand side, kind of how they had in the sketch. So I'm trying to figure it all out. Uh, I had this music paper. My mother's first love was music. She was in the orchestra. She played violin. She made her own violin. So music was her passion. So I wanted to represent that by having music. So I'm just looking at different ways if I should mat it. So I pulled out some of my interesting papers to try and add texture. But they were all a little bit too much. Again, it's going in a shadow box. So I wanted to add a lot of depth and texture, but it was too much. So I decided to just go with just the music paper. So I'm just trying to, again, layer the colors, trying to get an idea of, they're all very busy papers. So I didn't want too uh, many, you know, uh, um, I don't want it to clash, so I'm trying to do, you know, kind of the, the green and then break it up a bit and uh, play around with it. So, I'm on the bottom there, working on my title, I have the little tiny bracket, and the tiny bracket is actually coordinates perfectly with that banners too. I use brackets 1T. It's the exact same ending as our banners too, so it coordinates. 
and you'll see in a little bit I'm going to use our tiny tag too which also coordinates exactly with that ending so it works out perfectly for this video let me see uh tiny tag number 60 I used and they all coordinate which worked out perfectly so I'm just going through and cutting out my lacy trims and I'm going to start cutting out my paper I had to decide what size to do uh, I kind of just went with where the paper broke right down the middle I figured it was kind of easiest because it would uh, look complete in the end I do think it could have been a little bigger but then I kind of didn't need room on the page for other stuff so I am happy with where it was but um, I cut that at it's about seven by seven so I did the music square at the back. I have my lacy trims. I did not trace the center because I wanted that kind of doily look. And then I was trying to decide on placement, but then I realized I needed my space in the bottom. So I couldn't do too much, uh, couldn't come down too far. I really, again, the sketch was so pretty. I had to kind of keep thinking about how I wanted it. Did I want it more like the sketch or, you know, Kind of, I would just stick it to hand and I'd re-question what I wanted because it was like, hmm, I like that. So I went with the green, this beautiful green with this kind of lacy pattern, but it was nice. It wasn't so busy because it's um, just a pattern on the green, not multiple colors. And that is the exact green of my office walls. I just couldn't believe how perfect this paper pack was. So that is Banners 2. So again, I'm just trying to figure out placement and what I want to do. And they have on the sketch, they kind of have it free floating. They don't have it all the way at the edge. So I was trying to decide what I wanted to do. There's so many great stickers in this pack. Uh, lots to do with memories and time. So I was trying to tie in what I wanted to do. But I am from England. My mother's from England. And again, I want this to be a tribute to her. So she is from England. So I did want that on there. So I'm looking through, there's a couple of different ones. I wanted to find the right size. So I did find, find think the small one would be best. And that's where I bring in the tiny tag. And I, uh, again, you'll see how perfect they are, how they all coordinate together. So if you want a page that's coordinating, it really is great. So I was able to just kind of add that in. Again, just elements of her, the fact that she's British, she loved her music, and I'm British too. <laughs> so, um, just trying to think of what else. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so she did pass away 20 years ago. She was actually visiting here in America when she passed away, so... I don't have a lot of great pictures of her so for me this one's a really special one and that's why I want to hang it up in my room it's not kind of um, I feel it's not morbid because it's not a newer picture of her it's kind of a happy I mean she looks kind of you know young and goofy in her hat it's such a happy time I thought this would be a great one to hang in my office and just to look at her and smile and you see my watch parts I've pulled out I uh, love clocks I have an obsession of clocks I collect clocks so I've been collecting a lot of watches that don't work and I was going to use them for different art pieces. I am so glad I never used them because I love them. So I got to use them for this layout. So looking at my complete layout, I couldn't be happier like because I got to keep them for me. So I have this um, little metal rose I'm trying to coordinate in too. I try a few times to coordinate it in but I didn't have enough jewelry pieces so it didn't really work so in the end I did just go with the clock pieces which are my love anyway so I'm very happy with how that worked out so I'm just edging everything I kind of edged as I went along because I wanted to kind of see how it was looking together the background paper I did edge that because it was going in a shadow box normally I wouldn't edge my paper but I did as it was going in a shadow box but edging it as I was kind of going along, I didn't stick it down yet because I still wasn't sure of the final result. But it helped me kind of see the separation in the papers and what I wanted to do. That's the shadow box again, just kind of somebody had jumped on and asked what I was doing. So, so 
and then get all out of you there. I'm kind of concerned that maybe I didn't cut my background, the music paper, big enough. But the end result, I had to have some room at the bottom for anyway. So I am, you know, I'm happy with it. I did decide I was going to make it free floating, just like the sketch. So I just trimmed a little bit of the banners two off. And it's funny because like I have it how I want it, and I go to stick it down, and then literally every time I go to stick it, I'm questioning. Is that where I want it? And then I'm just kind of looking at my bits and pieces now, trying to decide. And then I have brought out my little metal pieces, trying to decide if I would just want to add in kind of vintage stuff there. So I'm looking at the different titles now, trying to decide what title to use. There's some really neat titles in this pack and neat things. This one says Enjoy Life. So I think maybe I could use it. Uh, so I'm just trying to decide what would fit, what looks best. And I have so much paper all over the place, so I was trying to decide what else I was going to use and got it out of the way. So I was trying to, so I was kind of getting buried in myself. A lot of the papers I felt were just too busy. I didn't want to, I like the keys, but I wanted to really keep it about time. I, for me, time is special, especially thinking about her. You know, you, you don't know, I mean, she was 51 when she passed. You don't know how much time you have. So I really wanted to you you got to enjoy every moment you have. So for me, that's what time means. Clocks and time, you know, don't take any moment for granted. You're not getting it back. So I was going to incorporate in, uh, the paper, of the clock paper. And I don't know, maybe I should have used more of it. Maybe, maybe I should have because I didn't think it's so cool that the clock paper was actually in that paper pack. And that's what I wanted to incorporate was the clocks. This paper pack was just made for me. So I, I did use that one clock piece, but I actually buried it. You'll see at the end, you don't see it at all. I buried it under a, a real clock. This title right here, Cherish Yesterday, Dream Tomorrow, Live Today, is exactly what I want. Um, you know, you got to remember your loved ones and what has gone past, in good and bad. And you've got to dream about tomorrow, but it is a dream. But we've got to live ultimately for today because we just don't know what we will have for tomorrow. So I love that saying, but it really was too big. It doesn't work with the page, but I cut it out because I love it. And I think I'm going to do a little, a little frame something with that. So I did actually manage to get that title, but I use it in a very tiny little title, which you barely see. And I'm okay with that because I want the attention to be to her in the pictures. I know what that saying is, and I feel like it really draws you in to look at it. So I'm really pleased with that because um, it makes you look at the detail. See right there? You can barely see it on the camera. Um, but it's the same saying, and to me, you know, yeah, it makes you come in and look, and it doesn't take away from her, and I feel like, you know, it's it was perfect. So I did, it's on a sticker sheet. I've cut it so that I can play around with it because I wasn't ready to stick it down. So with sticker sheets, I'll cut them apart until I'm ready. That way I can kind of use them like our templates and move them around and play with them. And then once I'm ready, I'll take it off, stick it. So I'm playing around still trying to decide for placement. Uh, what do I want to do for clusters? How do I want to do it? And you can see that with the paper, um, I end up completely covering it. Now, I guess it's a shadow box and you can see it from the side, but only I would know it's a piece of paper. I'm still trying to decide on that title. I do love that title. I'm going to frame it and probably I still have some wash pieces. Maybe I will have a coordinating piece. So, um, again, I'm cutting some pieces out. I, I'm going to do a little ribbon on top of the title. So there was this mustard color lace piece and I wanted to decide if I was going to use that. But then I realized I really, really want, to, want more texture. So I'm going to use real ribbon. So I, uh, but I laid it out just so I can get an idea. And then on that left side, I want to fill something in there. Uh, in the sketch, they had journaling. So I considered maybe using a piece of the letter. Maybe I could take a photo of the graph of the letter and shrink it down. But the writing was already very small. And um, it, would, it really didn't have that much meaning to me. So I decided not to use that. So I'm trying to decide what to do on the left. I like that the blue. I wanted to incorporate that blue 
kind of to spread it out. I have it on the bottom, I have it on the top. I really wanted to put that blue on that left side. So I'm trying to figure out what I can use to tie it all together, um, make it all work. So I just kind of keep playing around, cutting out the things I love. And now I have out my powder because as I was telling you, I was cutting out the stickers. A couple of them were kind of deep in there. So I figured I could put my powder on the back. It's great for making a sticker not sticky. This compass rose, somebody had recommended, would it be a good match? And I thought it would be because it does have the coral and the green in it, like my office. Um, so does the Great Britain, it's perfect color. My office is coral and green and the Great Britain is coral and green. And so is this compass, compass rose, as someone pointed out. But it didn't work really with the clocks. I mean, it was perfect coloring but it didn't work with what I really wanted with the clocks. So I ended up not using that, but I was playing around because I wasn't sure if I, how much, if I, how much I wanted to use clocks. Did I just want a couple of clocks? So I tried many options because there's so much in this paper pack. There's so many different things you could do. So now I'm trying to find what coordinating ribbon I want to use. My bag of junky ribbon, I have so much, you know, I have so much ribbon, but that's the bag I often find the right color. So I was trying to find something with texture, something with the right color, and also pull out a couple of not so textured ones to get a better idea. So I'm trying to incorporate that coral. And, uh, I don't know, I didn't really incorporate the coral in the end, but I'm happy with it. Of course, now watching the video back, I wonder, like, hmm, but no, I'm happy with it. So I'm just playing around with the different options. So I have so many textured ribbons. <laughs> trying to see what I want to use. I'm showing my stash like I showed my washi tape thing. See, I have as much washi tape as you do. I really like that, but I felt this one, if I cut this cord apart, it would be, it would fray. So I didn't do that one, and I thought it was too much. So I'm just kind of trying them out, seeing what one I like. I did go with this green. I thought it was the perfect pop of color. I like the fact it still had that texture. And then I decided too how they had the in the sketch they kind of had a line down the side and that free form. So this would work perfectly for that. But I wasn't sure yet, so I cut it off. And then I just gently was trying to tack it down so I could see how it would look. But of course, trying to tack the curl that ribbon wasn't so easy. It kept trying to curl all over the place. So I. I was trying. <laughs> but now I'm very happy with how it all worked out. But this, is, this, this whole style isn't usual for me, having building in the middle of the page and not using a border and an edge. So I'm very happy with how it came out. Now I'm adding some burlap. I again wanted to build on textures. At the bottom of the sketch, they had journaling there, and I wasn't going to journal. So I'm just trying to add some more texture and bring that bottom corner down a little bit to fill it in a little bit. I really liked the different textures. So it was time to finally stick it down. I'm committing to that. I know I definitely want that top part. So I'm committing to sticking all that down. That's staying. So that's it. The ribbon's staying. I'm just using glue dot to stick that down. This is adhesive to stick down paper. Of course, I overthink everything when I'm sticking it down. Like, is that really where I want it? Do I want it there? <laughs> Should I change it? Should I move it? Where do I want it? And even though, you know, it says I want it there, and I, then I'm not sure anymore. <laughs> so I'm putting the burlap down. Tucking that right under the edge. I did decide I didn't want it as long as the page. Originally I had it kind of pretty much the length of the page. It was too long. So I'm just shortening how long it is. And then I realized my doily needs to be underneath. So I had to lift that up. And then it's like, what do I want that? Where do I want it to the right? Do I want it? <laughs> it's like, how far do I want to go out? And then I'm like, all right, I'm committed. I slammed it down. <laughs> no more playing around. 
And the same with Little Great Britain. Do I want it up? Do I want it down? Because I'm trying to figure out, again, what's still how I want to put that cluster at the top. And then it was just placement of the photos. Did I want to square them? And I did end up squaring them out. And I really like that. It kind of made the neater look. Took up less space. So I was happy with how that looked. I did end up using glue dots to hold the pictures down because they were old and curled. Uh, they do want to keep curling, so I did use a couple of glue dots on the pictures in the end. But I decided I wanted to move that, open more space up, so I did move the picture down and move that around a bit. And now I'm going to work on that bottom corner. Getting my little cluster set up there and adding my title in. So you can see it's layering. I end up completely covering it. I'm like, well, now you really can't see it. So I decided to put the pop dot actually on the clock and then put the paper clock underneath that. So you have that two layers. So from the side, you can see the clock at the bottom, which is neat. And I could have, should have used more pet clock paper. Thinking about it, I could have used another one at the top. I was having trouble filling in the top and uh, making it look balanced. I could have used a paper clock that probably would have done it. But I didn't like how far the burlap came out, so I decided to push it up higher. I give myself some more room down there. I'm just using a little bit of that green ribbon again to come across the top and sticking it with glue dots. Lots of glue dots here. I'm using the large ones. Um, they're a little gummier, but I was kind of breaking them apart and just using what I needed. So originally I was going to put my title towards the top. I wasn't sure if I should mat it. I did end up matting it. Um, actually, after I ended up the video, I did end up matting it and moving it. Um, I liked it better, a little pop of green, once I had done my clusters. But then I'm just playing around trying to decide. I did actually, I think, end this video before I finished everything because it was just, I didn't want to spend hours decorating it. So you'll see the final result. I ended up building a lot of clocks. As I say, I collect clocks. I love clocks. So I'm so happy with the end result. I ended up doing a lot of clusters, which worked perfectly. And I'm so happy with the outcome. I'm looking at it right now. I love it. I'm going to cherish it. But I didn't stay on doing it because I just felt like to spend, you know, I could easily spend another hour but playing with the clocks. I probably did. I have so many clocks. I was trying to use this clock to a certain age. I didn't want them to be too new. So I would have driven everybody nuts. And to others, they'd probably just use one or two clocks. But for me, where that was to me such a big part of it, I, uh, that was, you know, important to me, making them work. So I, I played around with them, I think, longer than I did the actual layout. Uh, I really enjoyed it though. I put down lots of little tiny cogs which you can barely see. Really, It's really detailed um, and they're sharp. <laughs> and when I actually put it into the case, I'm actually using the winders to pin it into the case. Uh, there's a little hinge um, that I end up putting in the front of the bracket, which is actually a watch part too. So everything that's on it is watch part. So I'm just really happy with the outcome. So I hope this gives you some ideas of just what to do with heritage pictures. Again, it was photo play reflections photo paper. And I used the banners two and the brackets one and tiny tags, I believe six T. So they all coordinated together. And uh, I'm just really happy with how it came out. And I'd appreciate what you think to it. If it's uh, say t completely out of my, my usual. So thanks again for sub subscribing and uh, hit the bell if you want to see future videos. And I uh, look forward to doing another video. I uh, can't, can't wait to see how this voiceover works. I say this is my first time, so we will see how this all works together. There will be pictures at the end of um, the completed project. Thanks again.